500 statewide. Good evening. Welcome to the Herndon Town Council Public Session, July 17, 2017. Good evening, everyone. I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. We're glad you're here. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have several sets of, um, of minutes to approve this evening, so we will, uh, we will address each of them separately. Is there a motion to approve the June 6th work session minutes? So moved. Oh, sorry. Second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the June 12th closed meeting minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Is there a motion to approve the June 13th public hearing minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Um, is there a motion to approve the June 19th closed meeting minutes? So moved. I'm sorry. A discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. And is there a motion to approve the June 22nd closed meeting minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. That motion carries. Um, for those interested in the public hearing on the reorganization of our zoning ordinance, I wanted to make sure that everyone was aware staff is recommending that the council continue this public hearing again through, Mar or through March, not through March, through um, <laughs> August 8th. Uh, since this public hearing was properly advertised, we will go ahead and open the public hearing if anyone is here to comment and, um, at a later time in the meeting, and then we will move to um, continue that. Um, next month, as noted in the town calendar, the council's work session will be on Wednesday, August 2nd, to allow the council the opportunity to participate in National Night Out on Tuesday, August 1st. Um, which brings us to our first presentation, which is a proclamation to recognize the 34th annual National Night Out, and I will call on Councilmember Olam to please read the proclamation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A Town of Herndon proclamation recognizing National Night Out August 1st, 2017. First celebrated on August 7, 1984, National Night Out is a unique crime and drug prevention event sponsored by the National Association of Town Watch. Over the past 34 years, National Night Out has grown into a massive multinational community building campaign that involves over 38 million people and over 16,000 communities from all 50 states, U.S. territories, Canadian cities, and military bases worldwide. The town of Herndon supports the Herndon Police Department and the local anti-crime programs in their efforts to heighten crime awareness and prevention, promote community police partnerships, and strengthen community spirit, energy, and determination, helping to make our neighborhood safer and better places to live. By celebrating National Night Out and in cooperation with efforts such as the Neighborhood uh, Fleet and Business Watch, the Herndon community sends out a message to criminals that our neighborhoods are organized and fighting back against crime. Therefore, Mayor and Town Council of the Town of Herndon, for Virginia, hereby proclaim August 1, 2017 as the 34th annual National Night Out in the town of Herndon and encourage all neighborhoods and businesses to join the Herndon Police Department and the Herndon community as we unite to celebrate and promote National New Night Out throughout our town. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, comments on the proclamation? Ms. Olam? Yes, um, I'm excited about attending uh, again this year. Um, I was participating in this before I was on council and it is a great community event. Uh, Please take a look at where there will be, check out your neighborhoods, and come out and join us. And be sure and leave your light on that night. That's part of what we do to get everyone to leave a night, their mm -hmm. light, front porch light on. Or if you don't have a front porch, just leave the indoor light on. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, Vice Mayor. This is absolutely one of my favorite nights of the year. Um, it's that 
community partnership with our with our police, um, getting folks out there. Um, and as a council member, we just are lucky to get to ride in a cop car, and when you actually want to ride in a cop car, <laughs> um, and just a really great event and well organized. And thank you so much to um, Officer Randalls for all the work she does to get this and coordinate with the communities. Thank you. Other comments, Mr. McKenna. I, I just want to um, reiterate everyone's uh, thoughts as well as the fact that um, it's just a great way to get the community out and also the partnership between the police and the community and um, building trust and relationships. It's extremely important and um, this is just a wonderful event and, and Herndon does such a great job. I've, I've been to a couple of these now in official roles so I'll be in a police car as well. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> um, but uh, I really love it and, and uh, truly appreciate it and thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, it is certainly a fun night. Um, we appreciate our Herndon Police Department so much. We are just so grateful for all the work that the men and women of HPD do to keep our town safe and to get to know people in the community. Um, I remember going to National Night Out when my children were really little, and they just thought we were riding around town looking for parties to go to. They, <laughs> about the fourth one we went to, my son was about six at the time, and he says, Mom, don't we usually have to be invited to parties? So he had no idea what we were doing, but it's, it's a great time, and we're looking forward to seeing so many of our uh, of our neighborhoods participating this year, um, I will like to um, recognize uh, senior police officer Denise Randall. Do you want to come down and say a few words, and then we'll join you for the uh, presentation? Thank you. Yay! Can you turn your microphone on, please? Thank you, HCTV. <laughs> is it on? Okay. Um, like I said, this is a really awesome event uh, for the residents um, to come out and meet each other and meet their police officers. They know what is normal in their community and what is not normal, and it's really important for the police department to know those things and keep track of those and, and help um, make their community safe as possible. So um, with that, uh, for communities who are not participating um, in National Night Out, we do encourage you to leave your light on um, all night long in support of this event. So thank you. Thank you. And she brought t-shirts. We're so excited. <laughs> uh, so I would like to invite down the entire uh, dais to come forward uh, for the presentation. Um, any members of um, HPD or the Herndon uh, Police Support Team that are here, we'd like to have you join us. And anyone in the audience that would like to recognize a National Night Out with us, we invite you forward.
Our next presentation, we are delighted to recognize Eileen Curtis, President of the Dulles Regional Chamber of Commerce on the um, event of her retirement. And I will recognize Councilmember Friedrichs to read the proclamation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, a Town of Herndon proclamation honoring Eileen Curtis, President of the Dulles Regional Chamber of Commerce. Eileen Curtis was appointed President of the Dulles Regional Chamber of Commerce in 1994, a role which she continued to serve through July 2017. This 23 year term makes her one of the longest serving Chamber Presidents in the United States. As Chamber President, Ms. Curtis faced many challenges and opportunities in a region experiencing constant growth and change. Because of her leadership, knowledge, skills, and abilities, the Chamber has become one of the largest Chambers in the Washington, D.C. area, and it has been at the forefront of promoting diversity and addressing critical 21st century workforce issues. With a keen eye to the future, Ms. Curtis launched several initiatives at the Chamber, including Innovate, an annual one-day conference welcoming the economic opportunities of change, and she developed partnerships with area high schools to help the students of today prepare to be the workforce of tomorrow. She led more than a decade of advocacy efforts for the Dulles Corridor Metro Rail Project, organized multicultural summits, and promoted community partnerships through Friday Night Live. As a valuable member of the community, Ms. Curtis received many awards and accolades over the years, including being named Woman of the Year by the Herndon Business and Professional Women, and as Chamber Executive of the Year by the Virginia Association of Chambers of Commerce Executives, just to name a few. Therefore, the Mayor and Town Council of the Town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby offer their deep respect and appreciation to Eileen Curtis, President, Dulles Regional Chamber of Commerce, for serving our community for the past 23 years with professionalism, distinction, and a commitment to see the Dulles area grow into the vibrant region we have today. Further, the Mayor and Town Council of the Town of Herndon hereby recognize Eileen Curtis, President, Dulles Regional Chamber of Commerce, for her dedication to the Town of Herndon, the Herndon Chamber Committee, and our business community, and wish her every success in the future and a long, happy, and fulfilling life. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, discussion or comments on the proclamation? Ms. Friedrichs. Um, I actually um, did a huge effort to be the one to read this. Um, Eileen has been a friend of mine for years. Um, she has been my bridge opponent. She has been a mentor. <laughs> and we have climbed mountains in Italy together. I worked for Eileen for several years as the um, a member relationship um, manager at the Dulles Chamber, and through her I got to know virtually every local business person um, that you can imagine, including uh, Sheila Olam, Grace Wolf, uh, Grace Cunningham, Mike O'Reilly, and so many other people who eventually became extremely important to me. So I have to thank you. Um, uh, the Chamber of Commerce is truly a great way to um, make connections, and Eileen Curtis was a, an amazing leader, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Other comments? Ms. Olam. I've known Eileen for most of those 23 years, and I remember when it was when you first started, and it was just the little Herndon chamber and how much it has grown over the years, which for all of the people in our community, as well as the whole corridor, it, it's just been an absolutely awesome improvement for us to be able to be members of groups like that. And still, it just ha you have so many events that you've uh, parlayed over the years that there's always something for someone to do that becomes a member of that chamber so that they're able to network and grow their business in this regional area. So good luck to you, and I know I'll be running into you because we have a lot of similar interest. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor, I'm yes. just kind of go down. I think everybody's going to speak. Yes, absolutely. Um, so it's been a pleasure to get to work with Eileen. Um, you know, we ha I haven't known the chamber without Eileen, so it's it's um, going to be a big a big change. Um, and certainly the partnership with our businesses and our nonprofits is so critical to us as a town, certainly to the council, but to us as a town. Um, financially, they represent almost 50% of our tax base, right? So certainly, I think that's one of the things that has been so important in terms of Eileen's leadership and just bringing that community into, 
into the fold, right, into the conversation much more so. It's not, um, certainly the residents are, of course, a key part of who we provide services to, but making sure that we're really focused on that business community. I think Eileen has done a great job of highlighting that, of um, just encouraging that conversation and bringing that to light. Um, Eileen brings a lot of, she has brought lots of great new ideas. I just think about all the events and um, what she's done with her um, uh, show on HCTV and just really brings, a, brought a lot of new ideas and events throughout the years um, as in her role um, with the chamber. And probably the thing I like or just want to recognize most about Eileen is that she's so positive. I just find her to be a really positive um, a pleasant person to be around who gets things done, right, and who's this master networker, but also just so positive, and I, I absolutely appreciate and love that about you. So we will miss you. Thank you. Ms. Cunningham. Thank you, Eileen. Congratulations on your retirement. I know it's well-deserved. People don't realize how hard you've worked for the many years you've chaired the, been the, um, the CEO of the, the chamber. It's nights, weekends, daytimes, after hours, Hernan festivals, Labor Day holidays, all of the above, all to support our business community. I've known you for probably 14 years through my three small businesses here in the area, and I've been a, a proud chamber <coughs> member, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Mr. McKenna. Although I, <clears throat> excuse me, although I probably know, don't know you as long as some other people on here, I got to uh, know you in the time I've been here, and you've been exceedingly friendly, warm, and just a, a pleasant person to be with. And knowing that you started back in 1994, even though I didn't live here, I had a friend that lived in Reston, and we came here uh, from college to uh, check the area out. And I, you know, I marveled at the toll road at the time because there wasn't many cars on there. Um, that's changed, and <laughs> um, and I think that that shows what your leadership ability is. This whole area, you know, has grown exponentially, and you've adapted with that. And that's something that many people struggle with in their lives, uh, adapting. And you've done an amazing job uh, leading this organization to where they're at today. And I and I've been to many meetings, and I think you've just done an amazing job. And I I really appreciate your efforts, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Eileen, um, you and I have gotten to know each other a little bit relatively recently. Um, I know that we uh, had a lot of fun on HCTV putting together your program where we interviewed people who were influential in uh, the Herndon area, um, also in the Dulles, uh, the Herndon Chamber of the Commerce, um, and our get together last September with the um, Hispanic uh, groups. And appreciate all that you've done. I've learned a lot that you've done that I wasn't there for, um, and I appreciate it all. I wish you the best in retirement. So Eileen, I just want to thank you for the partnership that you have worked so hard to establish with the town. Uh, change is hard, as we all know, and it started years ago as the Herndon Chamber, and as it grew and became the Dulles Regional Chamber, the chamber caught some flack for that. And every time I see or hear Eileen behind a microphone, she is reiterating that it is still the Herndon Chamber, and it's very Herndon-centric. There's a Herndon... Um, committee group that meets once a month and Eileen is almost always there if she's not there it's because she has another chamber of uh, something that she she just can't get out of because she really makes a point of being there so um, I just thank you for that did you guys know she's like this lovely like opera singer maybe you'll sing for us when you come down <laughs> I didn't know that about her until we were at an event and there she was singing I couldn't believe it so um, we know you're gonna have a great time in your retirement we're not sure what we're gonna do without you but I'm sure you'll do just fine without us <laughs> But we do appreciate all that you've done. Um, like uh, Jen talked about, you know, her posit positive attitude and the adaptation that, um, that Mr. McKenna mentioned. Um, you've seen a lot of change in, in our area um, since you've been at the helm of the, cha of the chamber. And whenever we've gone to, or, or I've gone to Eileen with a crazy idea for an event or how we might add to something that's already going on, she always says yes. So it's, we find a way to make it happen and I really appreciate all that I've learned from you. So thank you. We have several uh, guests in the audience that I would like to invite forward to speak. Um, Delegate Boisco, would you like to come forward? 
Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to be able to celebrate Eileen Curtis tonight. Um, since I've been serving over the past two years in the Virginia General Assembly, she's been somebody that I can go to with a question. I really appreciate the inclusivity that she brings with the Dulles Chamber, making sure that all kinds of voices are heard and have a seat at the table. She's also done a great job with the uh, executive women's group in the Dulles Chamber. I think that's been a wonderful thing. I've just personally enjoyed getting to know you just one-on-one -on -one and just so grateful for everything that you've done over the past 23 years. Thank you so much. Thank you, Delegate Boisco. Uh, former Mayor and Delegate Tom Rust, glad to see you this evening, sir. Well, it's always dangerous to give me the microphone. Uh, <laughs> you still miss Tuesday nights I, in I here, I just have, know it. I will have to say you're honoring the police department tonight, and I have a story. Sunday there was a loose dog in our neighborhood, and one of my neighbors came over and said, because we now have a dog who totally runs our lives, <laughs> and said, there's a loose dog out here. Can you help us catch it? So we're all running around trying to catch this dog. Only in a small town will two police cruisers and three officers show up to help <laughs> catch the dog. I will tell you, we were successful. We caught the dog and successfully returned home, only in a small town like Herndon. That's true. Uh, I digress. Thanks for having me, May uh, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, I guess I'm going to tell my age again. Uh, 23 years ago, the president of the Herndon Chamber, Bob, and I've now learned Galloway, called me up and said, you know, we've got a new president, executive director, CEO, whatever you call her, <laughs> coming in, we would like for you to meet her. So we met at some dive for lunch, and uh, he introduced her and said, you know, she comes from an opera background. She knows all about art. She knows she's a singer. She's been in public radio. And I'm thinking, is this going to work? <laughs> How is this going to fit in? Well, obviously I was wrong, and 23 years later, she obviously has fit in. She has done tremendous work, and all of you have mentioned things. The things that come to my mind very quickly are her things close to my heart, reaching out in uh, the STEM program, Science, Technology, Engineering, Math, uh, which she has been very instructive in in getting her business organizations to join the schools and particularly with young women who we need in that particular area. Someone has already said how much she worked on the Silver Line. Uh, she was there with us from day one on that thing through its many deaths and resurrections. <laughs> uh, she always stood with us. Uh, she worked hard. You mentioned the controversial decision when the Herndon Chamber became the Dulles Chamber. I, I definitely remember that. Eileen was never afraid to take a challenge, and she took that one on, and obviously it is now uh, very successful. I also recall she took, years ago, the issue of the policy issue of immigration, which is, was controversial then, remains controversial today. But I think her chamber was one of the few that took a strong position on the immigration policy and I believe went and testified in Congress. I would tell you she was a huge help to me uh, on the transportation issue here in Virginia. Uh, a number of us worked on that and uh, it took a long time to get there but we did get there and we got there and I think Virginia is a better place because of that. But Eileen in the chamber, when a number of us would get beat up pretty good every year over it, was always there saying, don't give up, keep coming back, keep working at it. So I'm here to thank her, wish her Godspeed, sun in your face, wind at your back, whatever that expression is, uh, and enjoy the travels. I was talking to her and her husband. Uh, they intend to travel, I think, and I hope she will and will enjoy it. We will definitely miss her, and I will miss her. Uh, I will tell you, though, she's writing a book, and she has talked to me about the book, and I think I'm in the book. 
Uh oh. <laughs> so, Eileen, as a long time, and I think in this crowd, the longest friend you have here, please be gentle on me in the book. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, former uh, Mayor Mike O'Reilly, would you like to come forward? Absolutely. <laughs> I wonder if you're in the book. Um, please be gentle. <laughs> Madam Mayor, members of council, town manager Bill, congratulations. Um, I've had the privilege of knowing and working with Eileen probably since 1994. Um, We've worked on a number of projects. During the time I had the privilege of sitting up on the dais where you all are, uh, we were working with issues related to immigration. We had a number of day workers that uh, couldn't find work and were waiting on the street corners, and we tried to do what we could about that. But Eileen began with the chamber to set up training programs so people would be skilled to have jobs so that they wouldn't need to stand on the corner. And as uh, uh, Tom mentioned, she did orchestrate uh, a couple of trips down to Washington where we met with our state senators, we met with our congressmen, and we didn't say what they needed to do, but the chamber went down with a number of uh, local leaders and said, you need to do something. You need to either figure out what you're going to do with 12 million people here, and it can be deport them, it can be grant them citizenship, there's anything in between, but your job is to do something about these people. And at local government, we're suffering because of your inaction. Now, it didn't work very well. We're now 10, 10 12 years later, and nothing has happened. But that was the kind of tireless advocate that Eileen showed herself to be early, in my experience working with her, and it continued, and positive in her approach to everything. We can do something about this, let's go do it. Uh, I had the privilege of serving on the Airport Authority Board when we accepted the Silver Line project from the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia. The governor gave it to us and said, here, you guys build it. We said, well, you forgot to negotiate the contract. You don't have a contract yet with Bechtel to build it. Well, you do that too. So once we started and we had a, a, a number of controversies, as Tom mentioned, uh, you know, over, under, we had funding problems. The federal government was ready to shut us down. Eileen always would say, what can we do? Let's bring the businesses behind it. What can we do to support? And the resolution references the fact that over 10 years she worked on the Silver Line and many people worked as hard as they could for a long time. And hopefully within the next couple of years we'll be opening stations right here in Herndon and we'll have great access. Uh, but that's partly the, the work that Eileen did. Uh, I've also had the privilege of serving on a homeless initiative that the county started about eight years ago, and we've had some success, and I think I've reported back on that to, to many of you. Part of the success we've had has been able to raise funds. When Eileen came to us and said, what can our chamber do? What can we do to help? And uh, they established a build a village campaign, buy a brick campaign, so we were able to begin getting donations. And uh, uh, anything that she could do and the chamber could do to try to support our cause, she was there. She's a tireless advocate. Uh, most recently, in the last two or three years, we've established the Herndon Committee of the Dulles Chamber and kind of come full circle to where we now have our local chamber back, which should make anybody, everybody happy, particularly those that were upset when they moved out to Chantilly or Centerville. Um, but, but we're advocating for the businesses in Herndon to the folks that matter here in Herndon. And I'm privileged to be involved in that. And I know I see many of you at those meetings, and I invite you all to come to all of them. We've got a great guest speaker at our meeting this month, our new town manager, Bill Ashton. <laughs> Somebody asked me what I thought Eileen was going to do when she, when she retired. And I said, she's going to continue to advocate for the community. There's no way that you're going to be able to stop her from being the advocate that she is. And our entire community has been blessed and privileged to have, the, to have her advocating for us. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, sir. And uh, we also have uh, our former Vice Mayor, Daryl Smith. Would you like to come forward? Yeah. We brought in the all-star cast. That's what the... The vice mayor just said, just yeah, for you. I speak after these giants. I know. <laughs> <laughs> mayor Merkel, member of the council, thank you for having us and allowing us to speak. Uh, my wife Maria and I, back in the mid-90s, were part of a group called Vecinos Unidos Neighbors United. 
we help kids at home work in one of the local uh, apartment complexes. And at one point during that time, we got more kids than we had volunteers. So we sent the word out, we need volunteers. And I walked in one evening, and there's Arlene Curtis sitting down with a child helping them with a math. And I almost did a Fred Sanford, <laughs> you know, like this, because, <laughs> but you know what, it really touched my heart. Here's this jewel of Herndon with a heart of gold come out in her extra time, which little, I know she had very little extra time, to sit down with a child that she didn't know to help that child be a better person. Just the contact made the child better. They may have gotten a lot done, but just knowing Eileen Curtis, when I told the kids what a giant they had in their midst, they couldn't believe somebody, the president of a chamber would come in and do that. But she made a big difference. You are a giant. And when I think of you, I think of a classy lady, a class act. Good luck and Godspeed. Thank you. Uh, I, I believe we have uh, Eileen's successor here this evening as well, uh, James Lawson. No, John Boyle. John Boyle. John Boyle. It, says, it says James Lawson, chair of the Dulles Regional Chamber of Commerce. Do I have that wrong? I'm sorry, my notes are wrong. Whoops. So, I'm sorry, so John, John, Boylan. John Boylan, would you please come down? I didn't think that sounded right, but that's what it says in red right here. So, <laughs> my apologies, I, I apologize, Thank that's you, why I Mayor. stumbled. I Welcome. It. Thank you very much. Uh, big shoes to fill. I've enjoyed working, transitioning with Eileen. I've had a chance to meet many of you already, and I look forward to uh, fulfilling the challenges and looking at the future and how we might be able to help Herndon. I love working the town council, uh, and hopefully you'll see me more often, and uh, I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to it as well. Um, is there anyone else in the audience who would like to come forward and, um, and speak um, on the occasion of Eileen's retirement? They're afraid they'll be in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Mayor, I'm Val Kaiser, and I had the pleasure to meet Eileen Curtis about four years ago. And we instantly clicked. And of course, I'm involved with the chamber, and I'm on the board, and I'm on the executive committee, and looking forward to working more with John. And the one thing you all have talked about so much about Eileen, you know, it's all there for you to see. But you probably don't know that Eileen is quite the athlete as well. And that's one of the things we clicked on. We both played basketball, et cetera. But I've seen this woman, when we've had a Dulles executive woman meeting at Pat Williams' house on her lake house, we had those paddleboard things that you all see when you're on vacation. People seem to be effortlessly standing and doing this. So they're instructing, just get on your knees and ease into it. Eileen gets right out there. She's standing and she's going around that lake and resting. And I'm going, oh my goodness, I was expecting her to just spill over. But that's Eileen. She goes after everything. I've heard she's really good at driving up volcanoes and these little tiny winding roads on all of her adventures overseas. So what I'm trying to say is she is the total package. And I am so looking forward to working with her on some other things in the communities and uh, some of the things that I'm involved with. And the chamber, I believe, is going to be in good hands with John. And Eileen has done an incredible job to hand over challenges to him, but also the means to do it, and also with the Town of Herndon Council's help. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? OK, well, with that, I will invite down the entire town council, the town manager, town attorney. Um, everyone who came forward to speak is welcome to join us for the presentation as well. And then we'll hear from you, Eileen, after, after the photo.
Let's see here. Are we still live here? Nope, it's on. It's on. All right. <laughs> Madam Merkel, members of the Town Council of Herndon, thank you for your friendship and for the honor you do me tonight. I've been thinking about what I wanted to say, and I'd like to take you on a walk with me down memory lane. As we have heard tonight, 23 years ago, I arrived at the chamber, and I found myself in hometown USA. I can't tell you the number of times somebody asked me, where did I live? And I said, I live in Herndon. I sleep elsewhere, but I live in Herndon. <laughs> <laughs> the town and the chamber are like a big family, and I have memories of a lot of special people from the town who were also leaders in the chamber. I want to remember them. Hal Launders, Peggy Vetter, Tom Rust, Betsy and Tom Grine, Nelson Post, Jack Seeley, Judy, Richard, and Doug Downer, <laughs> Bill Howlett, Les Seidel, Bill Lauer, Mike O'Reilly, Harlan Reese. There are a hundred more names I could list. The point is to make her, uh, the point to make is that Herndon has produced so many incredible leaders, including those of you now seated on the dais today. With my business hat on, I recall the many town chamber collaborations we have shared, including setting in place a new bee poll ordinance for home-based businesses, one of the first such of its kind in the nation, or the telecommuting center, again an early addition to the tech revolution happening here, and our sponsorship in 1997 of the International Congress on Information Technology. When the 2000 census revealed that the demographic population of the town had flipped, making longtime residents the new minority, the chamber staged a summit for all comers and invited the community to decide on the single most needed action to meet the needs of the newcomers. They proclaimed it ESOL, English for Speakers of Other Languages, and so we applied for and won a grant to provide language lessons to the new residents. When 9-11 took place, the town manager expressed the fear that the town might suffer backlash against its Muslim population. In just a few days, we staged an event on the lawn of the old town hall to solidify community oneness. 850 people attended, and the Boy Scouts raised $12,000 in 10 minutes for the families of the victims of the Pentagon. We participated in two charrettes aimed at imagining the future of Herndon, and in many ways, we got it right. We've marched to be counted among the, uh, among, I'm sorry, uh, and we've marched in homecoming parades, run the Herndon Festival Business Expo for many years, and now partner with the town on the Patriotic Challenge. And board member Doug Downer and his team, including our own staffer Laura Price and her husband George, run Friday Night Live, the best free summer concert series in the D.C. region. It is an event that mixes community spirit and economic development, and we love it. Um, so there's a short history of the Herndon Chamber, which continues today with monthly meetings, as Mike mentioned, at the Fortnightly Library, under his direction and that of Vinay Patel. I have loved so many things about Herndon, including its arts. I am thrilled to see that the great economic development initiative of the decade, development of the downtown, plans to include an arts center. I stated before an earlier town council that Herndon deserves to be counted among the top art towns in the country with its museum, art space, Next Stop Theater, Town Square Singers, Herndon High Music Program, and more. The art center will confirm that belief. So I thank you for working with the chamber to create new visions. I'll still be around, and I hope to share time with many of you in the years to come. Godspeed. Thank you. Thanks, Eileen. Um, next up, we uh, have our Yard of the Month. Uh, and I will recognize uh, Turan Shodman. I don't believe that Diane Stanley is here. Okay. Okay, perfect. Oh, no. 
So Tehran is representing the Cultivating Community Initiative, who recognizes the winners. So Thank welcome. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor, Vice Mayor, and the member of the Chamber of Commerce, I guess. No. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. Uh, and also town manager, our new town manager. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. As you know, I am a member of CCI, which is the Cultivating Community Initiative of Herndon. Uh, we are just a volunteer, a bunch of volunteers, I should say, that uh, we run about a uh, um, few um, uh, activities, and they are as such Yard of the Month, Garden Tour, Good Neighbor, uh, Dressing Up the Herndon, and the Holiday Home Tour. These activities are run yearly, and they are delightful, and you all can actually participate and go and um, be part of it. Uh, this month, June, um, we had uh, another yard of the month which was uh, nominated and um, the winner of the yard of the month for June um, is um, Sarah Davies and Tommy uh, Monroe and uh, the house is located at 682 Old Hunt way i think we have some pictures wow. that will show how beautiful really their yard is and well deserved um, uh, i would like uh madam mayor uh to come down Certainly. and also sarah and uh, tommy to receive your award and also uh, we have a sponsor from a farm uh, meadows farm which are giving about 30 dollars gift card to our winners. So we also have, have this green thumb, which you will put <laughs> at your yard. Or not. Okay. And the town will get the get this <laughs> This will wrap up for me for tonight. Enjoy your evening, and I see you all again. Bye. Thank you. Um, with concurrence of council, I would like um, to ask that I am um, able to amend the agenda to move our ge one general item uh, ahead of the comments to um, pass the resolution to officially appoint William H. Ashton II as our town manager. Is that? Okay, concur. With you guys. Let's concur. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Well, um, it is with great pleasure that I move approval of Resolution 17G62 to officially appoint uh, Bill Ashton as our town manager, effective July 1st, 2017. Second. Thank you. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, mm -hmm. seventh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Discussion um, on the motion. Anyone? I'll see. Go sure. ahead. Sure. Uh, so. Um, I think we are really lucky to have Bill Ashton as our new town manager. Um, he effortlessly jumped into being the acting town manager with uh, our Anseline's retirement. Um, and although we certainly looked far and wide, we opened the search, we made sure we found the best candidate, and the best candidate, the absolute best person for the job was the person that's worked for the town for many years already, has such a great history here, um, is, is um, really already committed to the community. So I think I'm so excited to, to approve this resolution tonight and welcome Bill as our new town manager. Thanks. Thank you. Um, it, I, before I call on the rest of the council, I do want to just reiterate to uh, the people here in the room and if anyone's watching at home that the council search for the new town manager was a nationwide vigorous search, as the vice mayor alluded to. We got more than 70 applications um, when we started our search back in March, it was. Um, we narrowed it down and we interviewed five candidates um, that were assembled uh, with a panel that included myself as well as uh, former town manager Steve Owen, who was with the town for several years, and Mercury Payton, who is the current town manager of Vienna, because we thought it would be a good perspective to have other professionals in the, in the role that we respected and that knew a lot about Herndon. So they, they were instrumental in that. Uh, throughout the interview process and over the past four months, Bill has served as our acting town manager, and I think it became clear 
to uh, my council colleagues and myself that um, his leadership experience, his expertise, um, and really his, his, his leadership style of empowering people to make good decisions and take risks on their own was exactly what the town needs um, at this critical juncture. Um, he has a knowledge of town policy. We learn something new together every day. We turn over a lot of rocks, so I brought you a rock. Um, <laughs> and most importantly, throughout the process, he spoke so highly of our town staff, the management team, and the teams that they've assembled, and I think that um, our already very uh, well-appointed staff is just going to bloom under your leadership, and we are Really thrilled to have you on board, um, and we are planning um, a more formal uh, welcome and reception for later this summer, early this fall. We're getting that together, so I, I wanted to say all of those things and officially congratulate you and welcome you aboard. And I'm sure my colleagues would like to pile on. So, Ms. Friedrichs, we'll just go down the line. Uh, Bill, we were uh, so thrilled um, when we interviewed you. Um, you have already, I think, um, instituted a, a new way of, um, what I want to say is the staff is very happy and that makes us happy. I really like your um, IT skills. That helps us a lot. Um, I think we're getting things done very quickly and very efficiently and um, I look forward to working with you. Um, Ms. Olam. Yes, welcome new town manager. <laughs> and. Um, I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed working with you over the past seven years and, and in your previous position and when you were acting town manager on numerous occasions over that time. And uh, everything has just been going wonderfully uh, during the transition. And now with you in this new position, I know it will continue. So uh, congratulations and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Ms. Cunningham. Adding on, congratulations. It was, um, in, in some respects, a really easy choice because it's uh, about leadership, thought leadership, vision for the future. It's going to be an exciting time. It's, it's really the best time to be here in the town. If you live here, if you work here, if you're elected here, if you're visiting here, it's a great time to be in Herndon. And I'm really excited that you're going to be at the helm with us. And, um, you know, when you're the acting town manager, when you, when, um, you know, the town manager would go out and you'd send us an email saying, you know, so-and-so is out of town, I'll be the acting town manager. I'd promptly email you back, promise not to burn the town down. <laughs> so I guess we'll have to continue that. So welcome aboard. Thank you, Mr. McKenna. Yeah, I'd like to reiterate uh, my colleagues as well. Um, I was very impressed with you um, as I started my role here um, and then going through the inter interview process and thanks to uh, Tanya Kendrick's uh, ability to get the uh, interviewing other people, I realized that you were the best choice um, just based on getting different perspective. And we had, you know, very good candidates, but that just speaks to your uh, abilities and uh, very looking forward to working with you. And uh, my dad gave me some advice when I won my council seat when I was 24. Be careful what you wish for. Um, <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, welcome aboard and very excited to work with you. He, he did come back, so that was a good sign. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Davidson. Yes, Bill. Uh, congratulations again. Uh, we talked just yesterday about this. Um, it's an exciting time, as you've heard in town, and as you well know, I know it's exciting to get the acting off of your title. <laughs> now that we can really get to work, and there's no question about who is doing what and what the responsibilities are. Um, you know what our priorities are, and we've talked about them. Um, there's, there's a lot of work to do, and any way that we can help, let us know. Congratulations. And Vice Mayor wants to talk again. Sorry, yes. Because <laughs> once it got set up again, I was like, hey, wait, a couple more things. And I just, and I I just wanna, everybody don't pile on. I, know. I don't usually do this. But I just want to acknowledge, I mean, this really was, the council did take this with so much the weight of this decision, right? I mean, our previous um, town manager, there was such longevity there, right, um, from that tenure. So it was such an important decision. And we really, I just want you to know we, we really um, understood the weight of that decision and, and took it quite seriously. Um, and of course, there are huge things to do. So just so much confidence in what Bill can bring given his experience in the town. And I'm just, I want to chime in on the IT thing too as well. Being an IT person, that certainly didn't, didn't hurt as well. I liked that part. Thank you. <laughs> 
Well, and part of the um, requirement to serve as the town manager is that you must, our charter states that you must live within the town limits of the town, which Bill and his family do not right now. So that is, uh, will be happening over the course of the next, uh, next year. And I just want to say publicly that we realize what a huge commitment this is from your entire family. And we thank you very much for that. So and if you would like to say a few words, you certainly may. Um, as I stated in emails before, I'm Bob's extremely honored and touched by the offer to, to be town manager. And um, it's, I think it was just said here a few minutes ago, it's truly an exciting time in the town. We have some great opportunities. We have some wonderful things in front of us. We have a great staff that's out there just doing it every day. It is truly a remarkable time to be involved, much less be town manager, to be involved in this organization in any way, shape, manner, or form not just to be town manager. And um, I, I'm very honored. I thank you for all the kind comments tonight. Uh, hopefully I can, as I said in one of my emails to you, I pray that every day I can live up to that. <laughs> so uh, you set a tall, tall order. We have a lot of great things to do, a lot of hard work to get us there. And I look forward to, to doing it for you. And thank you very much for your confidence. You've shown in me not only as acting, but in the confidence you're showing in me by naming me tonight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So with that, um, I will call the question on the motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. That motion uh, is unanimous. Obviously, I teased Bill I was going to vote no all week, but, <laughs> but I came around. So congratulations. And let's pass this rock down. Too. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That brings us uh, to uh, the comments portion of the agenda. Um, Mr. Town Manager, did you have any comments for us? Yeah, yes, I do, Madam Mayor. There are a lot of smiles in this room tonight. I mean, it's, a, it's been a great night with a lot of honors and wonderful things, but there is one smile that's just a wee bit bigger than everybody else's in the room. This is Bob Boxer's last council meeting. <laughs> he, he's getting his Tuesdays back after this. Oh, so man. What will you do with all the time? No. <laughs> That's right. That's all, Madam Mayor. Certainly. And we will be recognizing uh, Bob Boxer at our August public hearing on the occasion of having the nerve to retire. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so that brings us to comments from the council. Mr. Davidson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to comment on July 4th weekend. It went over fantastically. I know in my neighborhood by Trailside Park, there was a much larger um, accumulation of people than there has been in the past, and there were a lot of people who had a great time. Uh, so I want to thank all the town staff and all the different departments that put together efforts to resulted in the 4th of July that we had. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKenna. Uh, just real quickly, I want to thank everyone that's been sending in applications for the Youth Advisory Council. Very excited about that. Uh, they've been coming in droves, actually, and um, I got to tell you, it's a, it's really cool seeing some of the stuff that's been said. So, um, I, I it's, it's just fun resumes to read. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. It's it's uh, it's been great. And um, if you're watching on television and you're interested, if you're in middle school or high school, uh, send in your application on the website. It'll be more than look. Glad to work, look it over, and we'll see you when it uh, starts again. Sorry. Thank you. Ms. Cunningham. Uh, two things. I just want to offer congratulations. Um, last week, Senior Police Officer Ron Ike was one of the 11 graduates of the 97th section of the Virginia Forensic Science Academy in Richmond. And we have a fantastic police force. If you haven't had the opportunity to meet them informally, please take a moment out at National Night Out and meet um, the men and women who serve you. They are a really great group. Um, the other thing is Parks and Recs has started a new thing called Family of games days. So Saturdays in July starting next weekend will be on the town square, town hall square from 1030 to noon, fun free family games. So come out and uh, challenge your kids to little outdoor activities. They can put their phone down and actually play a real game. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ms. Friedrichs. I have nothing. Ms. Olam. Thank you. Um, just wanted to remind everyone that Next Stop Theater has a new uh, event going on. It's a grand night for singing. Uh, that'll be July 20th through August 20th. I'm planning to go. The last play they had year in town was excellent. So check it out. Uh, it's right here in town over at the uh, old uh, off of Spring Street, the little uh, industrial park over there. So it's great. It's a great night out and they have restaurants over there you can also frequent. 
Thank you. Vice Mayor. Yes, I just want to thank um, our um, community center and our um, Parks and Rec Department for uh, for 10 years now co-sponsoring the Herndon Swim Olympics. So that was yesterday and this morning at the Kingston Chase Pool. Um, I got to give a few brief remarks, followed by two Olympians. So when they said the Herndon Olympics, I didn't realize they literally meant there are two Olympians. Um, no, it was, it was cool. Um, including um, uh, uh, Jimmy who had his gold medal from Rio um, there, which was just really cool for the kids to see and just um, a great community effort to see um, see the kids come together with that so thank you for that thank you um, I just wanted I think I said this earlier but just to remind everyone that our next work session will be Wednesday August 2nd um, because of uh, national night out the day before that um, so that brings us to comments from the audience uh, first I would like to um, recognize Delegate Boisco who has a presentation for Mary Tui. See, she hasn't been gone that long. She's already bored on a Tuesday. She's back. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her, she's like, seriously? Oh, come on. Throw us a bone, Mary. Come on. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Madam Mayor and members of the council, it's my pleasure to tell uh, Ms. Tui how grateful the General Assembly is for your many years of work. Um, I just got to say, it is so much fun to come to the council meetings these days. Every time I come, I leave with a big smile on my face because y'all are doing such great work, and I'm just so happy to be in this community. So I'm going to read this. The House Joint Resolution Number 1045, commending Mary K. Tuey, agreed to by the House of Delegates on February 21st, 2017, and agreed to by the Senate February 23rd, 2017. <clears throat> Whereas Mary Kay Tui retired as the Director of Finance for the Town of Herndon on December 31st, 2016, after more than 34 years of public service, whereas Mary Tui holds a bachelor's degree in accounting from Virginia Polytech Institute and State University, and a master's degree in public administration from George Mason University, and a license as a certified public accountant, she began her career in local government with the Town of Blacksburg. And whereas, on March 2014, 1994, it must have been a good year for Herndon, <laughs> Mary Tui was appointed by the town manager to serve as the director of finance for the town of Herndon, where she provided exceptional leadership to the service and members of the Herndon community for 22 years. Whereas, Mary Tui managed the town's finances, helped collect delinquent taxes, fees, and claims for the town, and helped the town achieve and maintain a triple A bond rating and excellent financial reserves, a tribute to her sound financial leadership. And whereas, committed to financial excellence, Mary Tui worked tirelessly to ensure that the town consistently met the government financial Finance Officers Association's highest standards for accounting and budgeting, whereas Mary Tui's diligence and attention to detail nearly guaranteed that the town received the Distinguished Budget Award and the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for the town's comprehensive annual financial report from the GFOA each year she was in the town, and whereas Mary Tui's commitment to the town and her application of the highest standards were apparent throughout her active involvement in several professional organizations, including the Virginia Government Financial Officers Association, where she served as president from 1996 to 1997, the Virginia Local Government Financial Corporation Board of Directors, where she served as vice president in 2016, and her active participation in the GFOA. Where and whereas, exhibiting a collaborative attitude, Mary Tui was always will, willing to support the financial needs of every town department by maintaining a positive outlook, seeking solutions rather than barriers, welcoming a challenge, having a strong sense of humor, willingly teaching others what she knew, and demonstrating her passion and enthusiasm for her job and for the town every day. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Delegates, the Senate concurring, that the General Assembly hereby commend Mary Kay Tuey on the occasion of her retirement as the Director of Finance for the Town of Herndon in 2016, and be it resolved further that the town, the clerk of the House of Delegates prepare a copy of this resolution for presentation to Mary Tuey as an expression of the General Assembly's admiration 
and for her loyal and dedicated service to the residents of the town of Herndon, and best wishes for her on a well-earned retirement. Oh, so congratulations and thank you for your service. Oh, We're very thank grateful. You very Absolutely. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, certainly. Well, I wasn't expecting quite a long uh, <laughs> recitation of my whole resume. As a matter of fact, I have to put my resume together again because I lost the original copy of it, which was in some Word document somewhere. So I can use this as sort of my, my template. Um, I was quite surprised and, and certainly very pleased when uh, the legislative assistant for Delicate Boy Scout contacted me and said, hey, we got a, a commendation from the General Assembly for you and I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, totally unprepared um, for, for something of, of that uh, high magnitude and that honor. And I want to thank uh, Mayor Merkel and the members of the town council for allowing the presentation to take place at your public session. I certainly appreciate that. And also, um, just thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. We miss you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this is the portion of the agenda where anyone can come forward and speak on any item that's not listed as a public hearing item. If you would like to come forward, please state your name and address for the record. And um, you have up to three minutes when the red light comes on, please try to wrap up. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward? Well, thank you very much. That does bring us to our public hearings. Uh, the first one this evening is Resolution 17G61 to consider a special exception to allow um, an increase in the number of children at the Herndon United Methodist Church Preschool, 701 Bennett Street. And um, I'll open the public hearing on this resolution and recognize uh, Ray Osell, who is here for the staff report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the Mayor read, this is a uh, actually an amendment request by the Herndon United Methodist Church Preschool, which is located on Bennett Street right across from the high school, uh, seeking to uh, change the conditions or their previously approved special, special use permit back in 1987, which was about when the church started operation at that location. At that time, it was just for 100 students. Now the request is for 140 students. Um, there were seven previous conditions with that um, special use permit they're listed in the staff report most notably like we typically do uh, numbers limit the number of students at any one time so even though it's a hundred student limit at any one time there could be 110 on the on the rolls also well, typically list the hours of operation and that's again the the um, would carry over to the amended uh, permit that we would have now the, actually, the preschool started over 30 years ago when the church was over on Spring Street. I think it's the Pentecostal church now, mm -hmm. across from the old location of the Fort Knightley Library mm -hmm. in Caddy Corner to the new firehouse. Right. So that's where it originally, originally started. The existing um, preschool takes up or has about 7,000 square feet in the church to operate. You have a... Uh, um, footprint of the building as well as an interior diagram of where those classrooms are located. The church also has um, approximately 183 parking place spaces, uh, so no issue there as far as, far as parking. Um, I think they have a, a very good circulation pattern going through the, through the church, one of the better ones I've seen over, over a lot of years. Um, the parents are instructed to come in off of Bennett Street come in the first entrance to the um, to the church, come around in front of the church, go around the side, and then to the back where the children are dropped off. And then the parents can uh, simply proceed straight ahead, go out to Drainsville Road, and then exit, exit from the property there. There's a lot of stacking space on the property, um, and so with the uh, people coming in that direction and exiting in that circulation pattern it limits any any type of stacking that may may occur on Bennett Street and of course Bennett Street in that area is two lanes um, so that if there is any stacking it'll be in the right lane anybody needing to pass by would go in the in the uh, in the left lane now the Planning Commission as they're required to do held their public hearing and review back on June 5th and the Commission unanimously recommended approval 
with the seven conditions, and they're listed in the staff report and a resolution as well, to permit the 140 students and then the hours of nine to five. Now, right now, the hours are um, a little bit before that, but the commission just wanted to extend that a little bit to give the uh, preschool a little bit of flexibility later in the afternoon so they don't have to come back and amend it if they want to till five o'clock, let's say, which is what the commission was recommending. The staff was also recommending approval of the application for the 140 students along with the um, expanded hours and those conditions are all contained in the resolution before you this evening. Okay, thank you, sir. Are there questions for Mr. Rosell of the council? Um, so this is a public hearing and I believe the applicant is here. Would you like to come forward? You may or you don't have to, but we do give you the opportunity <laughs> if you'd like to come in and say anything about the case. No? Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any questions um, from the council for the applicant about what we're, what we're considering? No? Okay. Well, thank you. Um, I, this is a public hearing, so I will call for comments from the audience. Is there anybody that would like to come forward and speak on this item? All right, well, seeing none, um, I'll close the public hearing and move to uh, council level for discussion and action. Uh, Ms. Olam. Madam Mayor, I move approval of resolution 17G61. I'll, I'll say, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Discussion on the motion, Ms. Olam. You have an excellent reputation. It's good to see that you're increasing your numbers. That is something that I don't have to worry about anymore. My mm -hmm. children have both graduated from Herndon High, but I know when I was looking for quality care for my youngsters, that that's something that we need in our community mm -hmm. uh, to make it uh, a good family livable place. And the fact that you start at nine, school across the street is starting much earlier. <laughs> Uh, if you were starting at seven, oh my gosh, it would be a nightmare. But uh, you know, with your time schedule and 3:30, they got out to an hour earlier or five o'clock. So, uh, look forward to your addition and uh, wish you all the luck. Thank you, uh, Ms. Cunningham. Similarly, my daughter, who's now 20, went to HUMC preschool when she was three and four. So we have fond memories of going through that uh, carpool lane. I know we did inquire about the traffic patterns, and we were assured that traffic is not nearly as bad now as it was then, even though you've got more kids. So the parents obviously have learned. So <laughs> congratulations and good luck with us. Thank you. Other comments? Mr. McKenna. i just like to say just from a, um, I think it's great that you know, you're able to expand to, uh, for more kids because preschool is so important. Um, I had preschool. It was a Methodist church in my town. It was called Busy Bee. And I remember what a, um, what a you know, it was a big deal to me because I was, you know, going to work like my mom and dad were. So uh, it got me into a, a train of thought and uh, have wonderful memories. I still remember when uh, I was Chewbacca when I was four years old at, at Busy <laughs> Bee. So uh, I look forward to everything happening with that as well and uh, wish you all the success with this. Uh, yes, I offer my congratulations on the expansion. and. Um, my, my children went to uh, church preschools as well. It's a great uh, you know, community place for kids. It's affordable, more affordable than a lot of the other preschools. And so we appreciate that there'll be more opportunities for our families right here in town. So if there's no further discussion, I'll call the question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, and that motion carries. Thank you for sitting through all of our proclamations. And it is not, re it is not rude if you want to bolt right now. So <laughs> we'd love to come with you. <laughs> so, so thank you for being here. Let us know if we can help going forward. Uh, our next ordinance is 17013 to consider a zoning ordinance text amendment um, chapter so to 1701 chapter 78 zoning to reorganize the zoning ordinance. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, staff is recommending that we continue this through August for review, but since this was a, a properly advertised public hearing, I will open the public hearing and recognize Mr. O'Sell again. Lay it on us. Okay, I will. <laughs> um, and actually the... I'm sure everyone's read all of it so far. It's only about 500 pages, right? Okay, just checking. Actually, it's more than that, so if you only oh. read 500, you oh. still have more to go. So, <laughs> yeah. That's as but, far as I got. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> but this is actually something the town council started uh, is with one of your goals 
um, a couple of years ago uh, under the celebrating community spirit, and that was to rewrite the ordinance. And what I mean with that was um, drafting a reorganization of the ordinance. We were not making amendments that would change it. We're just more or less shuffling things, shuffling things around, which, which we've done. Um, there was a committee of uh, seven staff members that participated in working on this, including the town attorney that made sure we weren't making substantive changes. <laughs> and, um, and then we ended up with the, with the reorganized ordinance. Back in February, we came to the council to initiate the process to begin the review with the, with the planning commission to review the draft that we came up with. And like I said, we're in the past where we were bringing zoning ordinance text amendments to you for changes. Uh, all we were doing was reorganizing the format here. I just I keep reemphasizing that just just to make sure I know you know that, but <laughs> anybody that might be listening is as well. So the Planning Commission uh, began their review earlier this year. They actually held three work sessions and two public hearings. Um, the Planning Commission was great in their review. They actually uh, divvied up the sections or the chapters in the ordinance and reviewed each one of those and then provided staff comments. So, and actually we had, it was really good because there weren't all, not only comments in regard to the organization, but questions on things they were reading, uh, editing. So it was, it was really good that while the preponderance of those comments were not reorganization, it helped us make changes to the ordinance in the way of editing. So they did a, really did a good job for us and, um, and recommended approval of the uh, reorganize, reorganized ordinance, along with the uh, addendum sheet that you have. As, as we've continued the review of the ordinance, we came up with 19 other uh, sections we'd like to move around. We didn't want to keep changing the ordinance every time we found something, so it stayed the same all along with the addendum. Um, if you, if we, we'd like to hear from you, <laughs> in the next week at least, um, so we can make these changes. And truth be told, we've already done it. <laughs> so we have, we have one <laughs> so version. So we better like it. <laughs> no, we have one version with it already just to try to get ahead. And um, we'll come back in August because we are recommending deferral with a ordinance that would include these as well as the other edits that we're doing, grammatic, grammatical errors and things like that. So. We are recommending deferral tonight for a little more time to review it. Like I said, the Planning Commission had it for three or four months, so uh, we want to give you the opportunity to thoroughly go through it as well. Thank you. Do you have questions for Ms. Rosell? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is a public hearing. I don't know if we even have an audience anymore, but if anybody's here that would like to come forward, we'd love to hear from you. No? Okay. Uh, thank you. So um, I'll close the public hearing and I will ask for a motion to continue the public hearing to a date certain of August 8th, 2017. I'll second it. I already wrote your name down, Bill. So uh, we have a motion to continue made by Ms. Olam, seconded by Mr. McKenna. Discussion on the motion? Anyone? I saw Jeff reach for his microphone. He's tricking me over there. Um, thank you for reiterating that this really is just a reorganization. We do actually have some, um, some things that we need to change and, and amend in our zoning ordinance because of things that have happened in the General Assembly, but we are unable to do any of those until we have the reorganization um, yeah. approved. So once that happens, we will start doing some of those housekeeping items. So um, everybody make sure you read. I feel like a teacher again. Do your homework. No. no, I really truly, I don't expect all of us or any of us really to read every word, but do take the time to look it over and just make sure that it's, the format is working for us and that it's doing what we're trying to do. So I appreciate that. All right, so there's a motion to continue. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, that motion carries. Um, the next couple of ordinances are our lease agreements. Um, Ordinance 17014 is to approve a lease amendment between TWC Association Management Inc. for office space at 397 Herndon Parkway, which is um, part of our um, police station building that we um, have for lease. And I talked long enough for you to get here, so welcome, Jenny. Um, so we'll open the public hearing on the Ordinance 17014, and uh, Jenny Tripoli will give us our staff report. I don't. Yes, there you are. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of Council, Town Manager Bill, Councilor Lisa, Margie. 
Um, <laughs> this is my first presentation for you, and it, I know it's going to be riveting. But uh, yes, yeah, so we <laughs> were um, fortunate to work with the current tenant, uh, TWC Association Management, to extend their lease term for five um, years and three months. It's not on. And we don't think your microphone is on. Darn it. There we go. Oh, oh there And we you go. even told her that it was. It's our fault. Sorry. Well, I am kind of loud, so it's <laughs> difficult sometimes to tell if it's a, mo a microphone or just me. Um, to reiterate, we are happy to uh, renew the lease uh, with TWC Association Management for five years and three months. Um, as folks know, again, the, the 397 Herndon Parkway that houses HPD um, also has a commercial side. And so this lease term uh, is definitely great to have because the market's softening a little bit. So we're excited to have worked with um, Steve Anderson as our agent and uh, TWC to renew this lease. Okay. Thank you. Are there questions uh, for Jenny? No. Okay. Um, this um, is a public hearing. I don't believe the applicant is present, but if the applicant is here, we are, would love to hear from you. Okay, seeing that, that they are not here, is there anyone in the audience like to come forward and speak on this item? I thought Sierra was coming for just a second. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll close the public hearing and move to council level for discussion and action. Anyone? Ms. Olin? Madam Mayor, I move approval of Ordinance 17-0-14. Second. Okay, discussion on the motion. I yeah, just want to thank staff for their negotiations to keep the tenant in the building and keep it rented for the next five years. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I concur with the office market being what it is. I think this is beneficial for everyone, so we appreciate your hard work on that. Um, this, uh, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 The opposed, and that carries. And the next one um, is Ordinance 17015 to amend the lease for Events Analytics Inc. for space in the same building. So. Correct. Now, this uh, lease term amendment is to take it to month to month because the tenant is a government contractor and they are awaiting approval of um, some upcoming contracts. So we're happy to work with them and uh, you know, hopefully once they get those contracts, we can renegotiate to something that is not month to month. Thank you. Uh, questions for uh, Ms. Tripoli? Okay, this is a public hearing. I do not believe the applicant is here again and I don't believe there's any public here, but if you're out there, we'd love to hear from you. Okay. Um, I don't remember if I opened the public hearing, so if I didn't say those words, the public hearing was open all that time. Um, <laughs> I just need to close it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so if there are no comments, I will close the public hearing and move to council level for discussion and action. Mr. McKenna. I uh, just want to say, um, I, I making think- Making the motion? Oh, oh, sorry. I'm making the motion to, uh, right. for ordinance 17-0-15. Perfect. All right, Mr. McKenna. Just want to say I hope to have a successful August and September. It's going to really help out. So exactly. good luck, guys. Yes, and I hope they have uh, positive negotiations with their contract so that they can stay in the town. Of Absolutely. Exactly. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, that motion carries, which brings us to the consent agenda, which includes items 14 through 16. Move it. We have a motion made by Mr. McKenna. Second. Seconded by the Vice Mayor. All those in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries and that concludes our agenda this evening. Madam Mayor, seeing no other business, I move we adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> You're waiting for somebody to be Sheila. I was going to do it, Sheila. Was <laughs> all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed and we stand um, adjourned at 8.20 p.m. Thank you everybody. See you next month.